Yes, good afternoon. Welcome back to the channel. Hope each and every single one of you are doing well. Before we get into today's video, talking about Everton 2, Tottenham 2, the game management and looking at our upcoming games. If you are enjoying the content, go down, drop a thumbs up. If we could hit 500 likes on this video, that'd be absolutely insane. And if you are new to the channel, make sure you do hit that subscribe button. Only 50 subs now away from 20,200. Yesterday's game, Everton 2, Tottenham 2. The one word I would use to describe that game was frustrating. And I apologise. There, there was no watch along. I do apologise for that. But it was a massive kick in the teeth, that conceding a very late equaliser by Jared Braithwaite in the 94th minute. A centre back that Tottenham have been linked to a lot of this, a lot of the January transfer window. Big question marks about Tottenham when it comes to defending set pieces. In terms of the lineup, Richarlison doing his thing right now. Ten goals in the league this season, in twenty games with three assists. He is well and truly performing. That was the lineup we played. Vicario, Doggy, Van de Ven, Christian Romero, Porro, Hoiberg, Bentoncourt, Timo Werner, Madison and Johnson. A few people were a little bit surprised. Why did Saar not start? Due to obviously being eliminated from AFCON by Senegal. And he was on the bench and he did come on. In terms of the game though, a couple of worrying moments for me. I say worrying. There's a, there's a few worrying things about that game. So in the first half, you know, Richarlison gets us off the mark. You know, the ex-Everton forward comes back to haunt his old club. You know, great bit of build-up on the left-hand side. Your doggies released into space, puts the ball in, and Richarlison, with a wonderful first-time volley, hits it in the roof of the net. That was in the fourth minute. And I'm thinking, do you know what? An absolute... Magnificent start to a game where we were com in complete control, you know. And then after that, I, I just, I, I don't know. Everton, for about 20 minutes, they're a very physical side, right? Everton really showed why they're a good Premier League side. They get back into the game. Dominic Calvert-Lewin, you know, we were under deep pressure. McNeil... You know, his corners were causing us problems. Vicario doesn't, didn't punch it clear. And Dominic Calvert-Lewin makes us pay. And that, for me, is big, big warning signs about our defence. And the question I'm asking you guys is, and I'm trying to give this from a very, very balanced perspective, do we have defensive issues? We have conceded 35 goals in the league which is 21 more than City, 27, sorry, sorry, over nearly 30 goals less than Liverpool, 14 goals, 30, 14 goals less than Arsenal, five goals less than Villa, sorry, more than Villa, two goals conceded more than West Ham, three goals conceded more than Manchester United, the same conceded goals as Chelsea Football Club. The same conceded goals as Wolves. You know, Brentford have only conceded one more goal than us. Is our defence as solid as everyone is making it out to be? And I understand, you, you know, the system we play, we're very vulnerable to counter-attacks because we are... So on it from minute one, we are bang, 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 you know. But is it poor game management? I mean, if you put it into perspective, right, if you put this into perspective, Tottenham, fifth in the league at the moment, obviously Aston Villa won, which is extremely annoying. Two goals conceded to Brentford, two goals conceded to Manchester United, two goals conceded to Everton. Four goals conceded to Brighton. One goal conceded to Bournemouth, which, let's be honest, Bournemouth that day had a lot of chances. Two goals conceded to West Ham. Three goals conceded to Man City. Two goals conceded to Aston Villa. And we haven't kept a clean sheet in the Premier League since the 15th of December. 
We are one, two, three, four, five, six games without a clean sheet. Is our defence as strong as everyone thinks? Or is it the system? Or is it personnel? Let me know your thoughts because I'd be very interested to read through some of the comments on that. Then we respond again, Richarlison doing his thing, puts us back in the league. The finishes, you know, Madison gets his assist. Richarlison strikes again. And we go into half time. And let's be honest, we probably weren't the better side that first half. We did get better in the second uh, in the second half. We did improve, but I think there's a few warning signs there for me. A few warning signs. Signs. Vicario made some good saves. It was a very very good at first half to, uh, football. In the second half, we did step it up. You know, Johnson was subbed off for Kulu. But the the, the thing for me that is most alarming more than anything, is Ange Postacoglu's game management at times. I'll give you an example, right? 86 minutes, we sub off James Madison for Brian Hill. Everton are pushing for an equaliser. Corner after corner after corner after corner. Nine corners in the game. And we take off Timo Werner for Brian Hill. Why are we bringing on an attacker? Sorry, he took off James Madison for Brian Hill. Why are we bringing on an attacker when we're five minutes away from the game being over? We brought on Dragusin way too late. For me, I would have brought on Emerson Royale for James Madison, right? And I would have brought on Ollie Skip earlier in the game. It seems like the, the, the management and the tactics in games almost seemed like we would rather, with three minutes to go, go and try and score a third goal than protect the lead. I don't agree with that. Because if you go and try and score a goal, you get caught out on the counter-attack, which is what we do every single game. It like, like Brentford had multiple chances against us. Bournemouth. Bournemouth had, when you look at the, the stats, Bournemouth had 24 shots at goal. Now, whether you say, oh, well, it's only four shots on target, it's still concerning that Bournemouth have had 24 shots at goal against us. Okay, you might just say it's a one-off game. Everton, against us yesterday, had 14 shots. We had nine. Okay, you might just say, look, bad day at the office. Brentford against us had nine shots. Okay. A little bit better on us. Manchester United <clears throat> also had nine against us. West Ham United, 11 shots against us. We are conceding at the moment a lot of shots at goal. And let's be honest, in the Everton game, we played them at home. They deserve something out of that game and they deserve something yesterday. And it is a tough pill to swallow. 95th minute on the clock. 95 minutes or 94 minutes, you know, they snatch a point. A free kick's put into the box. Romero has an error and Braithwaite knocks it in. It's concerning for me the amount of goals we're scoring and it's very concerning for me how bad we are at set pieces. You know, I genuinely, like last last season was one of the highest scoring seasons Tottenham sorry one, one of the worst defensive perform like seasons Tottenham have had and we conceded 63 goals in 38 games this season as it stands we have conceded 35 goals in 23 games so I just want to ask you guys are we defensively do we have problems 35 goals conceded in the league like I said Conceded more goals. We've conceded more than Liverpool, City, Arsenal, Villa, West Ham, Man United. And we're on the same amount of goals conceded as Chelsea and the Wolves. We've conceded one more goal than Brighton. Now, our attacking, um, our attacking perspectives, we are very, very good. We've scored five more goals than Arsenal. We've scored the same amount of goals as Villa. And we've conceded, we've scored two less goals than Liverpool and Manchester City. Our attack, not, like, not a lot of 
not a lot of for me question marks. You, I know people are going to come out and immediately start throwing pelters like start throwing pelters at the likes of you know Brennan Johnson start throwing pelters at the likes of you know Timo Werner I'm not going to do that today uh, for me the attack the Tottenham are scoring goals at this football club and I don't necessarily think now is the right time to throw big question marks. Like, yes, when you look at the stats of yesterday, you know, nine shots away to Everton, six on target. Like, I, 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 I don't know. And we are unbeaten eleven games against against Everton now, which is which is good. But conceding a ninety fourth minute, and we we've conceded a lot of late goals this season. And they've all been away from home. You think back to that Wolves game. Like, bad game management that game from us. You know, Brighton, we, we were absolute toilet. I don't know. Like, what, what do you guys think? I, I, I do think we're, we, we, I do think we'll still get top four over Aston Villa. But when you look at Aston Villa's next, like, five games they've got coming up, they've got Man United at home. They've got Fulham away. They've got Forest at home. They've got Luton away, and then they've got us on March the 9th. When you look at our next games, Brighton at home next Saturday. Massive, massive game. And then Wolves at home on the 17th. Our next, and then we, then we don't have a game for two weeks because the Chelsea game has been postponed. That, that is worrying for me, not having a game for two weeks. What are the players going to be like? We'll have to see, but... I don't want this to come across as negative. I just, I'm just, I, at the moment, I'm, I'm really questioning us defensively, big time. Like, if you look at our goal difference, it's five less than the not than the likes of Aston Villa. It's, you know, nearly ten less than Arsenal. Thirteen less than than City, and, you know, eighteen less than Liverpool. We are conceding a lot of goals at the moment. And that Brighton game is going to be end-to-end. -end. They will come and try and play, you know, their football. They absolutely battered Crystal Palace yesterday in the derby. And they're going to be, they're going to be confident. We have to win. If West Ham beat Manchester United or Manchester United beat West Ham, they're only six points behind us. If West Ham win... They're only five points behind us. It's two points dropped. Look, it is what it is. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm disappointed, but at the end of the day, like I, I don't. I don't really see what. Like, I don't really see what. How it's gonna change in the short run in terms of our game management. Like, why are we not? Why why are we trying to score an extra goal with two one up? Just bring on some defensive changes. See the game out. That we we we're struggling big time to see games out. Recently, like Burnley had chances against us in the FA Cup. You know, we got back into the Man United game. We should have won that game, right? Toothless display against Manchester City. Toothless. Beat Brentford, but Brentford had a lot of chances that game. And they're a, they're a very poor side at the moment. Brentford are flipping 16th in the league. Like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts down below if you haven't already. Make sure you smash a like on the video. I'll see you all soon. I am.